But we begin tonight with the United States of America versus the state of Arizona, a dramatic legal showdown settled today between the federal government and its 48th state over the thorny issue of immigration. Today, a federal judge in Arizona put a hold on parts of the state's new papers, please immigration law that were set to go into effect just six hours from right now. The stroke of midnight tonight in Arizona, police officers were to be required by state law to demand the immigration papers of anyone they stopped who they believed to be in the country illegally. At the stroke of midnight tonight in Arizona, legal immigrants would be forced to carry their immigration papers on them at all times in order to prove their legal status. No longer. With a ruling handed down today at around 1 p.m. Eastern Time, a federal judge in Arizona put a temporary hold on those parts of Arizona's new law. The judge essentially agreeing with the United States government that those provisions go too far. In her 36-page ruling, U.S. District Court Judge Susan Bolton ordered a temporary court injunction against some of the most controversial provisions in Arizona Senate Bill 1070. Specifically, a provision that requires police officers to check the immigration status of a person they arrest if there's a, quote, reasonable suspicion the person is in the country illegally. A provision in the law that makes it a crime to not have your immigration papers on you. A provision that would require anyone arrested to prove their residency before being released from jail. All these provisions were essentially struck down today by this federal judge, at least temporarily. Now, in some cases, because they infringe on the role of the federal government to control immigration policy, and in some cases, because what Arizona wants to do here is just too onerous. In the case of checking the immigration status of everyone arrested, the judge wrote today, quote, requiring Arizona law enforcement officials and agencies to determine the immigration status of every person who is arrested burdens lawfully present aliens because their liberty will be restricted while their status is checked. In the case of requiring legal immigrants to carry their papers on them at all times, the judge ruled today, quote, the United States asserts and the court agrees that the federal government has long rejected a system by which aliens' papers are routinely demanded and checked. This requirement imposes an unacceptable burden on lawfully present aliens. Now, this judge didn't wipe out the entire Papers, Please law. She actually upheld a number of different parts of Senate Bill 1070. For instance, a provision that toughens state laws regarding human smuggling, a provision that makes it a crime to stop your car to pick up a day laborer. A provision that amends the crime of knowingly employing an unauthorized alien. All of the, those provisions of Senate Bill 1070 will, will go into effect tomorrow as scheduled. But the most controversial aspects of this bill met at least temporary defeat today at the hands of this federal judge. On the losing end of this court battle, Arizona's Republican Governor Jan Brewer, who signed this bill into law back in April. Governor Brewer was, not surprisingly, defiant today. That obviously is a little bump in the road, I believe, and that, uh, you know, until I get uh, my whole arms around it, uh, we don't really exactly know where we're going to go. I think that it's important to remind everybody that uh, today, uh, they absolutely, the federal government got relief from the courts to not to do their job. All this is a short-term pause on the implementation of this law, while its ultimate lawfulness is determined in federal court. Today's ruling is not a permanent striking down of Arizona's law, but it is the first legal victory for its law's opponents. Joining us now is Nina Perales, Southwest Regional Counsel for MALDEF, the Mexican-American Legal Defense and Education Fund. MALDEF filed a suit raising similar claims to the ones ruled on today in federal court, and Ms. Perales argued that case in front of the same judge last Thursday. Ms. Perales, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you for having me. So the lawsuit filed by the U.S. government raised same sorts of issues as the suit filed by MALDEF. Do you see this ruling as a win for your group today? Oh, absolutely. On behalf of all of the clients that we represented in Arizona, we're very pleased with the, uh, with the injunction that the judge ordered today, uh, halting uh, the major key provisions uh, of SB 1070. This essentially blocks the state from implementing what, is, what was going to be a state immigration system that created state immigration crimes and that forced uh, local police officers to maximize their questioning on immigration and maximize enforcement on immigration. Now, you, the, the judge essentially upheld some parts of, did uphold uh, aspects of the law today, and some of which that your organization objected to in your legal briefings. What about this decision do you disagree with? 
Well, yes, it's true that the court did not enjoin certain parts of the statute. Some parts of the statute had no teeth. Some parts were not challenged by anybody. But one example of a place where we were seeking an injunction from the court and did not receive it was with respect to these uh, two-day laborer provisions that you mentioned earlier related to getting into a car. Uh, in order to work, and uh, the court felt that at this point in the case she was unable to enjoin them because of some other case law that's moving through the appeals uh, system. But we're confident that uh, our First Amendment claims on those grounds will be victorious later in the case. That, that, that aspect of the law struck me as one of the most impracticable in terms of figuring out if, when someone's getting into a van, if they, <laughs> what exactly what purpose that is. But the, this is just a temporary injunction, and I'm, I'm, walk us through what the next step forward is. I mean, there's two lawsuits here. There's a DOJ's lawsuit, there's your organization's lawsuit, and there are differences between them. What are the next steps here? Well, the next steps are that the cases will move forward in the district court in front of Judge Bolton. Uh, we still have uh, most of the case to go where the judge is going to hear evidence and argument and make a final decision about the challenge to SB 1070. In the meantime, though, the state can decide, although I don't think we've heard yet, uh, that it wants to take an appeal uh, immediately to the Ninth Circuit and try to get the Ninth Circuit to uh, remove Judge Bolton's injunction. And we just don't know what will happen yet with respect to that. So we might see that appeal. I should note that in the opinion, in order to grant the injunction, the judge ruled today that there is a likelihood that uh, Maldef and, and the, the U.S. federal government would succeed on the merits. So that uh, is promising. Nina Perales, Southwest Regional Counsel for Maldef, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you.